Hello everyone, my name is Daniel, aka Penguin Pilot, and welcome to the video. Today, we'll be covering the basics of IFR flying. We'll discuss the three steps to IFR flying, how to have a proper instrument scan, and finally, primary and supporting instruments. Now, if these videos help you out, let me know by hitting that like button. Now, let's get started. The first thing to understand is that IFR flying is much more of a process. In VFR flying, we did it all by sight. You'd look 90% outside and only 10% inside. Now we're 100% inside, so we need to follow some more procedures to make sure we're staying safe while we're out there in the clouds. All these procedures can be summarized by a three-step cycle. You're going to perceive, you're going to interpret what you see, and you're going to make a control input, or as I like to call it, do something. After that, you'll repeat the cycle. So how do we perceive? Well, that will be our instrument scan. The most common scan for the G1000 is the T scan. This scan originates from the attitude indicator and moves to the three primary instruments on the screen. We'll talk more about what primary instruments are in a moment. As you can see, this creates a T shape, hence the name. The scan shouldn't be too long, usually only about one to two seconds on each instrument. Now every two or three full rotations, you'll also want to check your engine instruments. A scan doesn't do much good if your engine's overheating. Now there are three errors associated with the instrument scan. They are fixation, omission, and emphasis. Now all three of these are basically variations of each other, and if you're doing one, you're probably doing all three. But fixation is when you're staring just at a single instrument. You're forgetting to do your scan, you're just staring at that heading indicator. Omission is when you're admitting or leaving out an instrument from the scan. This is common with the engine instruments. The rest of your scan looks good, but you're completely forgetting to include that one item. The last one, emphasis, is when you're putting extra emphasis on a single instrument. Maybe you've had trouble holding your altitude in the past. So instead of spending a normal one to two seconds on the altimeter, you're spending five to six seconds there. So keep an eye out for these errors while you're doing your training because a majority of the mistakes you'll make while learning will probably be a result of one of these. So let's talk about what I meant when I said primary instruments. Well, there are two methods of IFR flying. They are control performance and primary supporting, which we'll mostly be focusing on today. Control performance is generally used by commercial aviation, airliners, commercial jets, etc. But we do use it a little bit in GA. How it works is that by controlling an aircraft's attitude and power input, a certain performance can be expected. For example, maybe you put 10 degrees pitch up with 2,500 RPM. You expect a 500 feet per minute climb. You put a known control input in, and got an expected performance out. The problem with control performance is that it's heavily reliant on the attitude indicator, and attitude indicators are typically not the most mechanically reliable of instruments. Commercial airliners can solve this by having multiple indicators, but most GA aircraft only have one, meaning control performance is probably not your best option. So let's talk about primary supporting. To understand primary supporting, you need to recognize that all aircraft fly via a combination of either pitch inputs, bank inputs, and or power inputs. Think about it. While you were flying VFR and you wanted to turn, you made a bank input. If you wanted to climb, you made a power and a pitch input. If you wanted to do a turning descent, you made a pitch, a power, and a bank input. And in VFR, you were able to look outside as a reference, but we don't have that anymore so we need to use our instruments instead. Now each of these three inputs will have one primary instrument that you mostly use, and then multiple supporting instruments, which support or reinforce what your primary instrument is telling you. Now the primary and supporting instruments will change depending on your flight condition, level flight, turning, climbing, etc. And we're about to go through all those conditions here, but there's something I want you to think about while we're doing that. Primary instruments are usually stagnant, they're not moving. For example, in a climb, the altimeter would not be primary because it's constantly changing. So that's a good hint when identifying a primary instrument. All right, so let's talk about our first example. 
we'll start with straight and level flight. Your primary for pitch is the altimeter, because now in this case, it's stagnant at your desired altitude. It's not moving up or down. If you were too high or too low, you'd make a pitch change to correct it. Our primary for bank is the heading indicator, and the primary for power is the airspeed. Now the tachometer is a good supporting instrument for power, but you can't adjust your power based solely by tack alone, so it's not the primary. You still need that airspeed indicator. So that's the first one done. Altimeter, heading, airspeed. Next we have climbs and or descents. Now, there's two ways you can do a climb or descent. You can do a constant airspeed, or you can do a constant rate. Depending which one you do will affect your primary instruments. For a constant airspeed climb or descent, your primary for pitch will be airspeed, because that's what you're trying to hold. You're pitching for airspeed. Primary for bank will still be heading, and the primary for power will be the VSI, because if you're pitching for 74 knots, but you're not climbing, you'll add more power. For a constant rate climb or descent, the primary for pitch and power just switch. Now you're trying to hold a rate, so the primary for pitch will be the VSI. Primary for bank is still heading, and the primary for power is now airspeed, because if you're holding a 500 foot per minute descent and you want to slow down, you're going to pull back power. So both ways use the same instruments, but whatever one you're trying to hold, an airspeed or a rate, that will be your primary for pitch. So that's two more complete. Now let's talk about turns. Your primary for pitch is the altimeter, but now the primary for bank will be the rate of turn indicator, which is that little magenta bar above the HSI. That will tell you if you're doing a standard rate or a half standard rate turn. Finally, our primary for power is airspeed. Now we need to talk about transitions. You'll notice that the attitude indicator has not been a primary instrument yet, and this is intentional. The attitude indicator will never be a primary instrument except during a transition, whether that's transitioning into a turn or transitioning into a climb or descent. Let's look at one. When transitioning into a climb or descent, the primary for pitch will momentarily be the attitude indicator because if you simply just pull back on the yoke trying to get to 74 knots, you'll end up chasing it back and forth and it'll be really sloppy. This is where a little control performance comes in. In a Cessna 172, we know that if you put full power and about 10 degrees of pitch, you should get somewhere around a 74 knot climb. So, you'll use the attitude indicator to hold 10 degrees of pitch until you get roughly to 74 knots. Then you'll transfer to the airspeed as your primary to maintain the climb. The primary for bank will be heading as usual, and the primary for power will be airspeed or VSI depending what type of climb you're doing. A transition for a turn is going to be fairly similar. Primary for pitch will be the altimeter, and this time the primary for bank will be the attitude indicator. For a standard rate turn, you usually need about 12 degrees of bank. So, You'll turn to about 12 degrees of bank, then switch to the rate of turn indicator for the fine tuning and maintaining of that turn. Our primary for power is still airspeed. The last one on the list has to do with instrument approaches, which we'll cover in a later video. But for now, just know that your primary for pitch will be the glide slope, primary for bank is a localizer, and the primary for power is airspeed.